Welcome to Ivy Church. Welcome to Ivy Church. Welcome to Ivy Church. Welcome to Ivy Church. Good to see you. Welcome to Ivy Church. We are reporting live in Jerusalem, outside Jesus' tomb, where we are understood to believe that Jesus was laid to rest on Friday. Yes, that's correct. We have had a number of Roman soldiers confirm that Jesus took his final breath on Friday. Eyewitness accounts said that around noon, darkness came over the whole land for around three hours. Other witnesses said that the earth actually shook, and another said that they heard Jesus said, it is finished and then passed away. What has finished, we aren't too sure of yet, but it really did sound like something monumental happened here on Friday, including the death of Jesus Christ. He is not dead, for he is risen. Pardon? He has risen. He has risen? Breaking news, this is news just in that Jesus Christ, just like he said he would, has raised from the dead. Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you
I needed rescue, my sin was heavy The chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Done 
great days Oh hero of heaven You conquer the grave You free every captive And break every chain Oh God You have done great things We dance in your freedom Awake and alive Oh Jesus our Savior Your name lifted high Oh God have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great have done great things. Oh God, you do great things. Good morning and happy Easter. My name's Louise and it's my privilege to welcome you to online church today. It is so good to worship, isn't it? To celebrate today that Jesus is risen, hallelujah. So a big warm welcome to you from wherever you are watching today. Whether you're here for the first time or whether you're a regular to Ivy Church, it is so great to celebrate with you this morning. And we have an amazing service for you with a brilliant word from Anthony, as well as the chance to pray together and to worship together on this, the best day ever. And you know why it's the best day? Because today on Easter Day, we get to celebrate the greatest day in history, the day that changed our lives forever and gave us complete freedom because we know that on Good Friday, Jesus died, but three days later, as he promised, he rose again. It says in the Bible that there were so many witnesses that even those who doubted came to believe. And it says these words, it says, he isn't here. He has risen victoriously, just as he said he would. So today we celebrate, today we praise him and today we look with new hope and we choose to know that Jesus is everything. Because when Jesus died and rose again, he opened up a way for us to follow him, to make his home our home, to make being at home being with him. And when we get home, we get to sit with him and meet God the Father. So let me pray for us now. Jesus, you have overcome death. You have overcome every fear that we could possibly imagine and we pray that you would help us to live each day remembering that you are alive, that you are bigger than anything in any given situation and that your power is real. Thank you that we get to come to you again on Resurrection Day and we love you, Father. Amen. Anthony's going to bring the word now and share with us the fact that Easter Sunday can bring hope to each one of us that each of us can be redeemed, that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God through Jesus's life, death, death and resurrection. So let's lean in. Let's be ready with hearts that are open today to hear from Anthony. <laughs> Happy Easter, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. See, we love that. I love that we get to celebrate Easter today. And I think if you're a Christian, you're gonna know what I mean. This is the time when all across the world, 
Christians all across the world, different kinds of traditions of religious worship or, or what it looks like to sing or different languages, we're all celebrating together the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he proved it because he, he came to earth at Christmas. He lived among us and did all kinds of miracles and left the greatest teaching that anybody ever taught. He transformed lives. He, he gave just hope to people who were hopeless. He gave life from the dead. He even resurrected other people. But he said, you know what? You're gonna, they're going to kill me. They're going to put me on a cross and I'm going to die. I'll be betrayed. He predicted it all in advance. But on the third day, I'm going to rise again. And then he did it. And that's why we're here. That's why we celebrate Easter today. I love Easter. I never used to really understand Easter, what it was about. When I wasn't a, a Jesus follower, you know, obviously I'd heard when I was a kid about Easter, but for me, I had the same excitement as everybody else. Chocolate, that was all it was about. More chocolate, more eggs. You know, we didn't, I don't think in those days we got as many eggs as they seem to offer these days, and it certainly didn't start so early. But, you know, straight away, we start to link Easter with all kinds of other things if we're not careful than what it's all about. And I certainly had done that. I, didn't, I just saw it as a bank holiday. You know, a time when we could have a little bit more time, maybe a bit more time down the pub or whatever else you wanted to do with your mates. Maybe there's some sporting fixtures, fixtures that are on. All of that. So it was a good thing. But for me, it wasn't a God thing. I didn't connect. I didn't join the dots with what God was actually doing with Easter. I just had some idea and some framework. But to me... You know, it was, it was okay, and as a kid it was okay. It wasn't as good as Christmas. But now I think I realise that without Easter, Christmas doesn't make any sense. Without the good news that Jesus grew up, that he wasn't just a baby who was God with us, which is amazing, but that he lived with us and then he died for us in our place. And now he's alive so that when he died, we can die to our old life. We can die to our past life. We can die to our sins. We can die to whatever used to hold us back and all those chains that used to bind us. We can all die to those things. And because he died and rose again, we can rise to new life too. We can be a new creation. Anybody, whatever we've done in the past, we've got a future. We've got hope today because of Easter. It's the most exciting thing. It's the most amazing thing to know. Jesus isn't just some religious teacher who's going to give us a list of things to try our best to do. That in the end, we're all going to fail at because nobody's perfect but him. No, Jesus is the Son of God and he died and rose again so that he would be our forgiver and our friend, so that he would be our leader and our companion through life, all of life, and even to the very end, which is just the new beginning, because Easter is really the day that death began to die. Death hasn't completely died because people we know and love still die. But when they do, we can now bury them in hope because Jesus, the Bible says, is the first fruits of those uh, who are going to be resurrected. It's like the, the fact that we can see his resurrection will help us to be able to believe that we will be resurrected when we die that the people that we love and, and have entrusted to him and who've trusted in his love and in, put in their life have put their life into his life, they'll receive everlasting life too. That's why Easter is just the greatest. And we don't ever want to forget that. We want to make sure when we're singing today, we're doing it with hearts that are just so full of love and gratitude for what God has got and done for us. And if you've not yet received this good news for yourself, today's the day. Today's just going to be... It's the greatest day in history that we're remembering and the greatest day in your life will be the day that you say, I want to put my trust in Jesus. Lord, I want to turn away from my old sins and my old life. I want to trust that you've forgiven me and that you love me and that you proved it on the cross on Good Friday. But I also want to, to, um, to, to be transformed by your power because the Bible says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is now at work in you and me to be able to change us and to change anything. Prayer works. He's right there with you. Jesus is there with you now by his spirit. And he wants to connect with you and meet with you just like he did. And we're going to read about it now with some of his friends. When they were so down, when they were so down, they were just about out on the road to Emmaus. See, the Easter stories is the one message that can bring lasting hope 
for anybody and everybody. Even those, you could be somebody who's dealing at the moment with the, the, the deepest grief, with the utmost devastation. The death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. That's what Easter's all about. It happened over three days to show in some way what life can be like for all of us in summary over a, one particular weekend. Friday was the day of suffering, the day of pain, the day of agony. Maybe you've had days, maybe months, even years that have been like Friday. It, you're like, why would they call it Good Friday? It was so bad. Saturday was the day, the long day, the longest day, the day of waiting, the day of, of yearning, the day when hope was just fading away, the day of doubt, the day of worry, the day of confusion, the day of fear. Maybe you've had a day like that, maybe you've had a week like that, maybe you've had years like that and it's just like you're waiting on something and it's like Saturday and it's just confused and you don't know what it is. Well, well God can meet you on the Friday. And God can meet you on the Saturday because he came back to life. Jesus came back to life to meet his friends on the Sunday. Because Easter Sunday was the day of hope and joy and victory. Let me say that again. Easter Sunday, Easter day, was the day of hope and joy and victory. That's what we celebrate today. The Easter blessings of hope, of joy and victory are all yours and are all mine. So we're going to read about these travellers on the road to Emmaus. Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 13, says, Now that same day, which is the, the Easter day, Jesus has already begun to appear to one or two of his friends. Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising them. Jesus is walking along with them. Now sometimes you see when people meet Jesus, it's like the famous story of Paul on the road to Damascus. He suddenly has this road to Damascus experience, literally, where Jesus appears and he's like, he's got no choice. He's like, wow, amazing. You really are the son of God and I've been persecuting you. I'm so sorry for my sins and give me a fresh start and a new life. And, and he's given a new, this, this climactic, moment that changes everything some people that's your story you can point to it and say there was a day there was a time when i realized who jesus was and it was so dramatic but there's another way that jesus comes and maybe you know in your life so far you might not even realize it jesus has been sneaking up on you as you've been walking through life and even as you've been discussing and walking it out together with other people like these people are processing your life what's gone right and what's gone wrong and what does it all mean what if Jesus is walking alongside you in all of that? As you're talking about your life and as you're wondering about your life, as you're wandering through your life, Jesus is coming and walking alongside of you, but you've just not recognised it yet. But today, Easter Day could be the day when that happens. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? See, Jesus is interested in your questions. He wants to know what's bothering you what's worrying you you can talk to him about anything they stood still their faces downcast one of them named Cleopas asked him are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and doesn't know the things that have happened there in these days he's like you know don't you read the news <laughs> can't believe that you've not heard what's happened what things Jesus asked about Jesus of Nazareth now you've got to realize last time they saw Jesus he was arrested, he was betrayed, he was beaten, he was brutalised. He was smashed to pieces as he went on the cross. He was whipped, he was flogged, he was covered in blood. He was weak, he was dehydrated, he was hurting, he was weak. But now this person is standing before them is not like that. This is the same person, but different. Whether he's begun in some way to be glorified and he's receiving that, that kind of, there's the hint of the glorified body that he's going to have in heaven, I don't know. But one thing I know is he's got the scars, but not the wounds. He, the, the scars are still there. If they look closely at his hands and at his feet, they're going to see something different, but they're not. They're looking into his face and they're talking to him. And they're not recognising yet who he is. Because as I say, last time his beard would have been matted with blood and he would have had his face distended. When I was in the police, I saw people beaten. 
I once got really badly beaten up myself and had my nose broken, my eyes all, all came out m massive and black and bruised. It's horrible. You know, you can see people and literally your own mum wouldn't recognise you. So it's no wonder these guys don't recognise Jesus when he's standing there in front of them now. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. We had hoped. Maybe you look back on your life and something's happened and it's like, I used to have hope. I haven't got hope anymore. Easter day is the day you can receive joy and hope and victory. And what's more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. So they now got something that they know about Jesus, but it's second hand. Maybe again, that's you. Maybe you don't yet, you've not met Jesus, you don't know Jesus, you know about Jesus. Maybe you've heard Jesus is the saviour of the world and that he died for the sins of the world. You just don't know it means you. You don't know that you can meet with him and have a personal relationship with him. It's second hand. Today, Easter means you can have a first hand relationship with God because his name is Jesus Christ. He, Jesus said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all of the prophets have spoken. Are you slow to believe? Some people kind of make it as if it's a clever thing. Uh, you know, that, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm one of life's doubters and all that. Well, that's foolish. God's real. God's true. God can do everything. God made the universe and he made you. Be fast to believe him. Be fast to believe good news. Some people end up so slow to believe even good news when they hear it. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Everything in the Old Testament was all pointing to Jesus. And so what he does, he takes them through the Bible and he says, you know this suffering servant in Isaiah? That's the Messiah. You know this one in Genesis who is said that he's going to crush Satan's head? That's the Messiah. He goes through the ram that was the sacrifice, the substitute on the hill instead of Isaac as Abraham was about to draw the knife. That's the Messiah. All of those, all those animals that were being uh, slain in the temple, none of their blood could wash away a single sin. That's pointed to the Messiah. And still they're not seeing it. Still they're not getting it. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if they were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it's nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. They have this hospitality thing. They want to bring him in. They want to find out more. Maybe you're somebody, in, in, in recent times, you've been wondering about Jesus. You've been wanting to find out about Jesus. Well, contact us, let us know. We'd love to go on that journey with you. Contact ivychurch.org and info at ivychurch.org and let us know. We'll send you some materials. We'll help you to find out how to find out more about Jesus Christ and how he is the son of God and how he's come to meet with you. And he can meet with you because he's alive. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to him. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. And then they asked him, each other. Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Maybe your heart's burning right now. As you're hearing about this joy, as you're hearing about this hope, as you're hearing about this victory that Jesus won over the grave, something's beating, something's stirring inside of you. Maybe if that's happening, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit of God. He's drawing you. He's calling you by name. He wants to show you more and more who Jesus is and who you are and who you can be when your life is connected dynamically with Jesus. See, these travellers on the road to Emmaus were stuck in the Bad Friday. But on Easter day, Jesus came and he met them. He'll meet you where you are and he'll show you himself. You and I are going to face these, these days. Bad Friday, waiting Saturday. But Jesus wants to meet you today and remind you and show you today is Victory Sunday. Today is Easter Sunday. Today is the day that death has been defeated because Jesus defeated death 
and he shook it off and he broke its power for every one of us. You are all, you, you're going to face Fridays in your life. You've probably faced them already. Times when you find yourself asking, how do I get through this? You're going to go through Saturdays, dry times, times of waiting and questioning. Maybe you've asked already, how long can I keep going? How can I keep going? The answer is Jesus. The answer is meeting with Jesus because he is alive. He wants to meet with you like he met with them. He comes to us as we're walking through life and he comes loaded up with blessings. He comes loaded up with peace. He comes to us and he wants to share the table with us. You know in those days you shared a table with people. What that said was that you were sharing your life with them and Jesus scandalised people because he would come and he would share his meals with the broken and the lost and the lonely, with the prostitutes, with the tax collectors and sinners. With all the people you shouldn't hang out with, those were the people Jesus was most drawn to. And he loved them. And they loved him. Jesus wants to come to your house, to be at your table today. Jesus is alive. He wants to meet with you. He's there with you now. And I pray your eyes will be open to be able to see who he really is and to know his presence with you right now. Because if you have Jesus with you, if you know Jesus is with, is with you, if you have Jesus... Whatever day it is, you will always have the blessing of hope. If you have Jesus with you, whatever day it is, whatever you go through, you will always have the blessing of joy. If you know Jesus, no matter what happens, no matter what day it is, you will always share the victory of Easter day with him. And you will live as an Easter people. Now, today and forever. Put your hope, put your trust in him. Ask him to forgive your sins, your mistakes, the things that you've got wrong. Say, Lord, I've had questions, I've had doubts. Please help me to not be slow to believe, but to be quick to believe and put my trust in you. And when you do that, he'll take that old life. He'll bury it. He'll take it to the cross, first of all, and, and kill it together with his, his death. And then he'll bury it in the ground. And all those old stains and all those sins will be rotten and forgotten forever. And then you will emerge with him into a new life. Because if anybody is in Christ, he is a new creation. She is a new creation. The old has gone. And the new has come because of Easter day. That's our reality. That's our reality when we trust in him. That's your future. And it starts today on this victory day. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs>Thank you so much, Anthony, for a talk full of truth and full of hope for each one of us. And like Anthony said, if you know Jesus, no matter what you're going through, you can always share in the victory of Easter Day with him. And as he said, if you want to know more, then contact us at ivychurch.org because we want to walk this with you, to go on this journey with you, and we can help you how to find out more. But if you want to respond to Anthony's talk and ask Jesus into your life for the first time, then please do press the prayer button now and one of the team will pray with you. Let me encourage you to do that today. Don't miss this opportunity to make the best decision you'll ever make. And also don't forget that you can give back to God today and at any time of the week via ivychurch.org forward slash giving and see how he multiplies our gift. was lost with a broken heart You picked me up, now I'm set apart From the ash I am born again Forever safe in my Savior's hands You are more than my words can say I'll follow you, live for all my days I fix my eyes following your ways Forever free in an ending grace Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ending Whoa, oh, oh You are alive in us Nothing can take your place You are all we need 
your love be my shining light Breaking chains that were holding me You sent your son down to set me free Now everything of this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face And I will live that your will be done And I won't stop till your kingdom comes Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ending war Oh, oh, you are alive in us Nothing can take your place You are all we need Your love has set us free You higher, your love, your love, your love, never ending war. Oh, oh, here we go. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. Well, I'm going to head off now and crack open the Easter eggs that are waiting for me. But however your Easter day looks, know that you are loved and seen and that today is a day full of hope and full of new life. Bless you. And we will see you next week. Bye.